In this video, we're going to launch up Burp Suite and just get familiar with the actual use of Burp Suite, how we can generally use it to browse our web application and what sort of features are available inside of it. That way we know where to find everything and how to generally use the application before we start to jump into more complicated things and actually applying the concepts of Burp Suite. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Burp Suite on my computer. And when I do that, the first screen I come to is asking me about how I would like to set up my project. Now, with the community edition, the only option here is going to be to set up a temporary project. Um, if you have the professional edition or one of the paid editions, you'll be able to actually save your project onto your disk and be able to load it off of your disk afterwards. Um, but for us, we're just going to work with temporary projects in this case. And then it's going to ask if we want to use the default or if we want to load from a configuration file. Um, in our instance, we can just use the burp defaults. Uh, the configuration files are mostly if you have a special configuration you need to make with burp suite, say you need to change the ports of the proxy server, for instance, um, you can write that into a configuration file. And then every time you load burp suite, you can load it from that configuration file. That way you don't have to continually um, re-enter the proxy server information every single time or whatever configurations need to be changed each each time. In our instance, we'll go ahead and use the defaults and we'll go ahead and start up burp. So when we first set up burp, we're going to have an interface that looks like this. And one thing that you'll notice here is this menu here that logs different events. Um, in my case, it shows that the proxy service has started on my local host at port 8080. Um, if you have any sort of errors or anything like that, they will display inside of this event log. So in general, if things don't tend to be working for whatever reason, you should check this event log and see what information is logged inside of it. Now, one thing that's really great in the newest version of Burp Suite is that underneath the proxy tab here, there's now an embedded browser that's um, included with the Burp Suite project. Now, way back when Burp Suite was first developed and um, up to relatively recently, you actually have to set up the proxy server as well as certificates um, through your actual computer browser itself. Um, now they have an embedded browser, which you can just click on open browser and everything's set up for you. And it's a separate sort of environment from your actual browser on your um, computer. So it allows you to make changes to that and be able to work with that without having to mess up your browser on your computer. So it's a really great new feature that we're going to be taking advantage of um, throughout these videos. So just to demonstrate that looks like we'll go ahead and click on open browser. And when we do this, you'll see it will open up the browser and I'll get this intercept here that will display um, information sort of similar to this. Now, if you're getting this information, it means that the proxy server is intercepting a packet. So this information is the packet that the proxy server has intercepted for us. So in general, we're going to be working with this sort of interface fairly frequently. For now, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the interceptor. And this is going to allow us to actually just use the browser generally as a normal browser that will allow us to be able to um, navigate to our web page and just make sure that everything is working. So inside of this browser, I'm going to go ahead and head over to localhost. And when I do this, you'll see I get the DVWA login page, I could type in admin and um, password. And um, I'll just click on save because I don't want to keep re entering the password every single time. And in doing that, we'll end up at our DVWA web page. So that's great. We're able to access this page through the embedded browser, which means that we'll be able to do anything we'd like to do um, through Burp Suite using this browser here. So we won't have to actually change things on our browser. Um, so this is this is really nice to have in general. So now that we have this set up, let's just take a look at some of the general things that are available to us inside of Burp Suite and just get an understanding of what we can do in the application itself. So the dashboard here, as I mentioned, has a lot of general information about the actual application running itself. So you'll be able to find things like the event log, you'll be able to find general information about um, how the proxy server is running, um, make sure that everything is working well. Um, the next tab over here is the target tab. Inside of the target tab, we'll find information about different web pages that we've visited. Um, and in general, it will try to map out um, each of the pages that we visited, as well as the things that are available in terms of whether there are posts or gets or what sort of different requests we can have um, what parameters exist, um, what the status was when we last tried to access it, all that general information about web pages that we're visiting. Um, in general, it will try to access things like robots.txt to determine the layout of a web page. 
Otherwise, it will just continually save the information as we visit the pages. And it will generally update information if it finds it through like robots or something like that once we visit the page to um, sort of be able to provide a bit more detail about what information is there. So generally, this is a really good place to go to be able to check out information about all the stuff that we've seen so far in our session. The next thing we'll take a look at is the proxy itself. What the proxy does is it acts as um, sort of like a, a man in the middle between the web server and yourself. Um, so when you send um, a packet, it gets intercepted here and it will display the packet that you're sending to the server. From here, you can get a general feel of what sort of information is being sent um, and then be able to utilize some of the other tools to actually um, alter that packet and be able to uh, manipulate it in a way that you might be able to get an attack to execute successfully. Next over is the intruder tag, um, or tab rather. With the intruder tab, we're able to essentially set up different payloads and attacks for common types of vulnerabilities um, based on, typically based on like word lists that we may have um, or may be able to find online. So this allows us to help automate some of our attacks. Um, so if we find like a post request that looks like it accesses a SQL server, we may be able to set it up to try a whole bunch of different SQL injection commands and that will allow us to determine if we might be able to find a potential attack through this intruder tab. Next up is the repeater tab. And what this does is we can copy or send a packet into this, and then we can alter it in some way and then resend it and see what the response ends up being. This is a really good way for, um, for practicing just like different attacks to say, um, you know, maybe if I change the post request to a single quote, let's see what the response is and just get a general idea of what sort of responses we're getting for different parameters and be able to try different things um, without having to do like an automated attack because in general, an automated attack is very loud. We typically want to stick with something that's a little bit quieter and the repeater tends to be a bit more, um, a bit more rigorous in terms of the things that we're trying rather than just randomly trying everything and hoping something works. Next, we have our sequencer. And what our sequencer allows us to do is it allows us to um, send requests from other tools. So if we have another tool that is able to capture information, we're able to utilize the sequencer to be able to work with that sort of capture. Um, in general, it just allows us to be able to capture packets between ourselves and a potential target to sort of have like a sequence of packets rather than having a single one. Um, it can be very helpful in situations where there's like a multi-step post request um, where we may want to be able to um, sequence out each of the steps, for instance. Next up is the decoder. A lot of the time when we have uh, parameters that are passed um, through the web form, they may be encoded in some sort of uh, you know, encoding mechanism. For instance, uh, there's a few different ones here that are available, like uh, Base64 is a really common one. So the data may be encoded in Base64, so we may need to decode it and then change it and then re-encode it into Base64. This is what the decoder will allow us to do. It will allow us to um, encode and decode information that's um, in a specific format. Um, it works for things like base64 and uh, you know octal binary all those good things but also hashes as well so you can see you get all these nice hash algorithms so if you have like a hashed password as a parameter you can put in something and then hash it and that might allow us to be able to uh, potentially get an attack using that hashed input for instance and then the last thing i'll talk about here is the comparer the comparer allows us to do word or byte level comparisons between different data. So um, it just allows us to check to see if two things are the same or if two things are different. Um, oftentimes data in packets ends up being very large and get like thousand length or 2000 length. So comparing it, you know, yourself is a little bit tedious. So we have a nice nifty comparer to just check to see if things are different or the same. And then the last few things here are just general like um, extensions to be able to add like um, custom code, which we don't really talk about too much, um, as well as some project options and user options for um, customizing your experience with Burp Suite. So this gets you familiar with the general interface of Burp Suite and the kind of things that we may be able to do with it, as well as the embedded browser. Um, in the next videos, we'll take a look at each of these different uh, tools in depth and take a look at how we can use them to try to attack our web application.